Good morning, everybody. Great to be with you this morning. It's beautiful outside. It's fall weather. Um, I'm really enjoying this week. I don't know about you guys. We're in front of the pictures from people in in our that have sent in. And mm -hmm. if you have a picture to send in, please uh, please send it in again. Or in addition to what we've had, send yours in. Um, got a few things to bring to your attention as we told you it's today is coming out or, or this week we're coming out early with coffee talk on Wednesday because tomorrow is truth and reconciliation day we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment but um, Sunday is communion so we're going to be celebrating communion on Sunday if you're watching uh, our services you can have your uh, the bread and juice ready uh, we will have that for you if you're here uh, tumble time. We wanted to tell you a little bit about tumble time. Something yeah. that's happened. Yeah, just well, yeah. So bit. tumble time has been a, a ministry of our church for quite a long time. Fourteen years. Yeah, fourteen years. There you go. Uh, and um, but through COVID, it's been a little less. So what it is is it's an opportunity for moms of preschoolers. I shouldn't say moms because I'm like if if you're a dad and you're at home, you could. I, I'm sure you could go. Uh, but for parents of preschoolers who uh, just to get together a couple times a month, kids can play and uh, you can, it's not really a support group, but I, I think there's a little bit of a, you know, camaraderie that comes out of that and, and you know, sharing life together and all of that. And, and we're gonna jump in there. Well, I was gonna say like, really, this was also even born out of the fact that, you know, sometimes, okay, so for the beginning of all this, sometimes a brand new mom yeah. will have a baby yes. and just feel like they have to sit at home. Mm -hmm. Right. And when you're a brand new mom, living in a new city and your husband has a new job and all of these things, yeah. where do you go? What do you do? Right. And so the point is connection Yes. Mm -hmm. and to not feel like you're alone. And, right. and like, that's, that's how, that's how sometimes we spiral in, in things yeah. in life and, you know, just being together with people, yeah. just having a coffee, talking about something other than, you know, at the time it was baby Mozart or, you know, <laughs> you know, Mm -hmm. the, the dog says, the cat says, ABC, yeah. but being able to have real conversations with people and just connect and... Right. Yeah. Well, and sometimes it's my, you know, my youngest is now four and I miss holding babies. Oh, by the way, you've got a newborn. I'm, I'm going to yeah, yeah. borrow that for 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, and so there's just a lot of, yeah, just being together and talk. So anyways, the first and third Tuesday of the month in the morning, they get together. My understanding is that it is so next week they're going to be together. Uh, I believe the plan is if the weather's good, they'll be out at a park in Anders Road. But you can contact me at the church or uh, Jamie Hoffey if you've got her contact info. I'm not going to spread it all over the internet, but uh, uh, as she kind of oversees that too. So uh, connect with us and we'd love to, if you're a, yeah, a parent of a preschooler, love to get you connected there. So that's, that's coming up next week. So thank you, Chris, uh, Tumble Time. And we talked about life groups. Can you tell us a little bit yeah, about so that? Yeah, so this last week, Jeff gave a, a challenge as we, as we don't just say, okay, it's fall, let's do life groups again. We actually are starting with, okay, why are we doing life mm -hmm. groups? What's, what's, what's everything behind this and what, where are we headed with this? And, and so it's gonna be a little bit of revamping. And, um, and so we put the call out and challenge out to, to people to really consider prayerfully you know how they see themselves connecting with other people and how unbelievably necessary that is and so um, we threw it out there Sunday um, to connect with us and, and email myself Pastor Kevin at lakeviewheightsbaptist.com or Jeff and just to talk and to and to work out you know where, where you want to where you want to connect and we are reforming some new groups or we are reforming groups we are also forming some new groups and we are we're trying to get people to connect uh, in, in a new way um, around these things. And so we call them life groups because we're sharing life mm -hmm. together. Uh, it's absolutely vital that we connect with other people and we are not an island to ourselves. Yeah. So um, you can contact us at the office. Pastor Kevin at Lakeview Heights Baptist or Pastor Jeff at Lakeview Heights Baptist. We've already heard from some of you, some responses. So uh, we're excited to start putting those together. Yeah. Well, we wanted to move into uh, Truth and Reconciliation Day, which is tomorrow. Um, I have to uh, admit that I'm, I'm just at the beginning of learning about this. I want to tell you something that I learned and then 
and then Chris will talk a little bit more because you're, you're more of the resident expert. You've done a little bit more reading than us. And uh, the, so the resident uh, researcher. Researcher, that's a good sure. better way. Because we none of us really uh, claim to know a whole lot. We, we but we're learning, and we want to invite you in that learning journey. So I didn't realize that Orange Shirt Day actually came from an event that that happened um, in 1973. Uh, that's my birthday, birth year. Just if you, now I've dated myself, but. Six-year-old Phyllis Webstad had her orange shirt stripped for her on her first day at St. Joseph's Residential School in Williams Lake. So the orange shirt actually came from an event that happened and it's recognizing something that, that, uh, that happened. And now it's been taken as a day in our country to remember. And so, um, Chris, you can kind of go from there. Just tell us a little bit about what we can do, what we, what it's yeah. for, you know? Well, I think that's one of the questions that so quickly props up in our mind is, okay, so what do I do with this? Like, it's one mm -hmm. thing to share information, but then, it, but, but what's the point of it? And it's not just to kind of weigh us down, but it's like, it's really natural to want some action steps. So, what do we do? so I think that the, the first thing is that the, the, really the action point, if you will, is to listen and learn. We kind of started with that a little bit on Sunday. Um, and there's, there's, thanks to this like thing called the internet, there, there's, there's more than enough you can read. And we can, we don't want to just like help you f drink from a fire hose kind of thing, but just maybe a few focused suggestions of, uh, taking some time this week to maybe do some reading or some listening or, um, uh, there's lots of stuff online, like videos and speakers and things like that, because it's truth and reconciliation week. Um, of which there is a day in the you know near the end of it that is is part of that. And so can I jump uh, in for a yeah, second? Yeah, because we got we got lots. Yeah, and I know that you, you might cover this, but um, the point of this isn't to make you feel guilty about anything. Mm -hmm. It's it's not to try to fix things. It's yeah. it's that's not what's being asked. It's it's understanding. That's why we're going into some some things. So I don't know if you were going to say that, but no, I just I, that's, that's that's say a good that point. Front. That's yeah. a good point because it's uh, yeah I, the. The last thing we want to do is um, all of a sudden put our little, you know, tool belts on and, mm -hmm. you know, charge out into our communities and be ready to, you know, um, it's, it's just a, yeah, let's, let's understand. And so part of what's also, you know, different is that um, I, I don't think I understood really how different of a, that, that, that a cultural difference is so much more than just some customs, I think is, is really part of it, at the heart of everything. That 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 a chief or a primary cultural difference between myself and my indigenous neighbors actually just goes to how they see the. It's really worldview level, right? How do we see the world? How do we see our relationship with geography, right? How do we see our relationship with each other? And so that is so much more than just, um, uh, you know, any you know my relationship with a drum or, or whatever that might be right like it's it's not just about it, it it's 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 uh it's big i guess is what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. just some flight so um it's it's worthwhile i think as us as you know people who are following the call of jesus to be good neighbors and represent him well and wherever where we go that we would gain some understanding and uh, of how people see the world. Those who like travel around the world as missionaries, that's that's like missions 101 is just get to know the culture that you're gonna be living in. Yeah. Well, we were born in this society and, um, but we, we if, if my case, grew up in it really unaware mm -hmm. of all the cultures that surrounded me because they for so long had been repressed. And so um, thankfully, um, uh, and I, I like to read, so you know one of the things I gravitated to this summer was a book. And uh, uh, one of, so one of the one of the first things we could throw at you if you really want a book, um, uh, Bob Joseph uh, with Cynthia F. Joseph has written a book. I started reading this summer called Indigenous Relations: Insights, Tips, and Suggestions to Make Reconciliation a Reality. Huge long title, but uh, uh, he's also written a book about uh, unpacking the. Um, let me just give you the title of it here, 21 Things You May Not Know About the Indian Act. And uh, so he is indigenous. He's, I don't know if he currently is serving as a chief of, uh, on, but he's from Vancouver Island. 
big plus, because uh, I love Islanders. Uh, and uh, anyways, um, so his book, it, it's kind of more focused at organizations, but man, as I was reading through it, I'm like, oh, that so applies as a church, as a you know, as an individual, it was like, I was just like, I can't believe I didn't know that. I can't believe I didn't know that. I can't believe I didn't know that. With every chapter, there was more and more. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, I feel like that should have been so basic. But it, it, it's helped me kind of unpack some cultures and customs and understand, oh, that's just someone's perspective. Okay, that's great. That, that's interesting. It helps me understand people better and, and have more, yeah, more connection, more empathy, more relatability, just to understand, oh, okay, they see it different. That's good. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I remember in the summer we were, because uh, we, I say we as if I have a hand in it. Sheena uh, it will often download audiobooks for car rides. And then one of them, um, uh, I'm going to say the, uh, the author's name wrong, but Margaret uh, Pokiak Fenton. I'm, I'm sure I mispronounced. I just learned today, actually, she just passed away in April. Uh, but she is a residential school survivor and has written uh, a series of four kids' books. So they're super relatable, easy to listen to. We listen to, I don't know which of the four we listen to here, but she wrote a book called Fatty Legs and Not My Girl, When I Was Eight and Stranger at Home. Those are the four books. They're all based, either based on or are directly heard. So two of them are memoir. Two of them are um, fictional accounts based on her experience. And so, and it goes through, as we were listening to the one we were listening to, it was like, oh, you know, going to the school thinking this is going to help me learn English and be able to relate better to my new world and everything that's all changing in the country around me. Um, and then the everything from her experience coming in home afterwards. And it was like, um, I'm no longer accepted in my community because of what I've been through away. Mm -hmm. and, and it was, it was hugely eye opening. And so I'm listening to the story, not realizing it was her life. And then they follow up at the end and this is the, I'm like, Oh wow, that that's real. Uh, so it was super eye-opening. And again, whether I I got a lot out of it as a as a 42 year old adult, uh, and and our kids were like, our kids were less phased by it because I think that they have grown up more in a school system that um, is just more open and talking about things like this. And and you know, again, they've been doing Orange Shirt Day for a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, but for for some of us, it's like brand new information. Uh, really, two things I would say, if you wanna go get into some websites, I mean, Cast and I had a great article about things going on this week, um, related to, if you just search Orange Shirt Day, you'll find it, but uh, in Kelowna now and some other stuff, talking about you know uh, survivors' perspectives and stuff like that. Um, the Center for, uh, let me make sure I get this right, I don't wanna, but the National Center for Truth and Reconciliation, nctr.ca, if you go there, you will find a whole bunch of different events going on online virtually this week. Uh, and so you can, you can listen to some of the speakers who have shared stories and, and you can get uh, connected with some great perspective that way. On the website, if you dig around a little bit, you'll find like the 94 calls to action, uh, which is sort of, this day is a response to one of those calls to action saying, hey government, like if we want to really have reconciliation, we need to have a day where we can just talk openly as a nation about this. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will, that's part of the process of healing. And so, um, you know, understanding what some of those are, uh, you, you know, you might be like, well, that one relates more to the government than to me. But I, I, I mean, we get to elect our government. So mm -hmm. even in that, we have a part. We still have a part in some of that too. Yeah, and so uh, as I was reading through those, like earlier in the, in the spring, reading through those going, huh, I, yeah, you know, it, it was, it's one of those things. Once you know, then you've got to figure out what am I going to do with that? Yeah. And, uh, and, and, but so it, I think it's worth, no, I would, I would say church, read it uh, so that you're at least aware of what it is. Um, and then the same guy who wrote this book has a website. It's uh, ictinc.ca, um, but he's got a blog on there. And, and one of the posts is all about this day in different ways, w what reconciliation is, what it isn't. And um, his primary focus is actually helping organizations um, understand how to relate well to their indigenous neighbors. Um, and so as I, even as I was reading his book, I'm like, okay, well that's talking more about like if I was the head of a pipeline company and I wanted to understand how to get, you know, different First Nations on board with our project, that doesn't feel super applicable, but all of the, the 
understanding like the seventh generation principle of how when indigenous communities make a decision, they don't just think about what that means for us today. I'll admit, I'm really short-sighted. I typically go, what does that mean for me? Maybe I'll think about my kids, but they're thinking seven generations down the road and how mm -hmm. that, and, and boy, what a, what a, no wonder decisions come about slowly because yeah. that's a lot to think through. Mm -hmm. And so how do we have extra then patience for our indigenous neighbors? Because they're, they're not thinking about, you know, seven years. They're thinking about seven generations. That's, that's mm -hmm. important. To, that's good to know. Yeah. Which, is, which is also interesting because, because we, we do have a tendency to kind of, let's just, um, you know, expedite all this, yeah. keep things moving. But we don't actually always even look at how, how it is going to affect other things and yeah. other, other places and, and people. And that's, I think, even one of the first things to learn in all this mm -hmm. is that this is more than just me. Mm -hmm. And my decisions and my actions have much larger ramifications than I yes. usually understand and know. Yeah. And so, you know, maybe that's something to just kind of think through. Mm -hmm. You know, even to just say, this whole week, as I go throughout my day, how are all of my actions affecting other people? Yeah. That, that yeah. might well, be a start. And, and we were challenged on Sunday, right? To think of others. Yeah. And, and can, right, mm -hmm. that came right out of Philippians, right? Think, yeah. consider, consider the needs of others, consider how our actions impact others. Well, our, you know, First Nations groups, Indigenous groups have been doing that for like ever, yeah. Yeah. right? That, that's, and I think I mostly do that, but I have to admit, often I don't, right? Often I, we can become pretty short-sighted and, and so, yeah, this, there's yeah. lots. There's lots you could work through, but uh, you know, what here's a great challenge. Challenge. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, what comes to mind to me too is this uh, shining a light on something, exposing things that uh, bring to light and understanding. We just we're trying to shine a light on what happened and understand it and recognize other people and other ideas and care for people. I, yeah. Thank you for for. Um, those perspectives um we'll have this resources listed at the bottom yep. there so uh so yeah take up chris's challenge do some reading it's it's about becoming aware and understanding in order to love people better um the people around us anything else that we want to say no just the, the last thing would be a if you don't want to buy a book, I mean, this guy's blog is basically everything he's in his book has been a blog post somewhere. If you dig through it, you'll find it for free and uh, more of a synopsis. But um, yeah, there's again, there's there's so many resources out there. We we don't have. I think I, if we don't know something, it's just because we haven't looked. Hmm. So yeah, yeah. Well, we hope that you um, that you find something from some of these resources and learn something and um, that you're able to, to broaden your understanding of the people around you, uh, our, our neighbors, and um, that God just really helps us love better through this process. Mm -hmm. Have a great rest of the week. We'll see you Sunday. <laughs>